Why is my Wi-Fi speed slower than Ethernet? Well, you really want that wired connection. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where I've been answering tech questions and sharing my tech advice since 2003. Let me read you today's question. Quote, I used one of those what is my internet speed sites. My wired laptop got around 260 megabits per second while the Wi-Fi laptops got around 80. The Wi-Fi laptops are 25 feet and two walls away from the router. In actual practice, Wi-Fi downloads are more than 20 times slower than wired. Why? The Connect window shows more than 28 WAPs in my neighborhood. Five are HP printers. I suspect interference is a problem. Is it? You know, it could be, and it honestly could be. But in reality, I think the bigger issue here is one of expectations. The short answer is wired is almost always faster than wireless for a variety of reasons. If we take a look at the various Wi-Fi 802.11 protocols, you'll see that there are different maximum speeds and many of them are actually slower than you might think. 802.11g, for example, a very popular current protocol, is 54 megabits per second. So that right there is already slower than the most common wired interface using Ethernet, which is usually 100 megabits per second or faster. So 802.11g, 802.11a, 802.11b, these are all protocols in the Wi-Fi suite that are all slower than 100 megabits per second. So if you've got a reasonable Ethernet connection to begin with at 100 megabits or better, then those protocols by definition are going to be slower. Now, the more modern protocols actually show some promise for speed increases. For example, 802.11n has a maximum speed of 600 megabits per second. The next one, 802.11ac and 802.11ax, both have maximum speeds exceeding a gigabit, sometimes by quite a bit. But there's a catch. And that catch is kind of what you alluded to, that wireless protocols are extremely sensitive to interference and signal strength. What that means is that these maximum speeds that are often listed for your wireless protocols are typically theoretical, to put it bluntly. And in fact, they're rarely, if ever, actually achieved. So there are at least a couple of things you can look to improve your wireless speed, or at least take into consideration to understand why it might not be as fast as you think. The first is simply distance. Wireless signals decrease in strength over distance. The further away you are, the less of a signal there is to pick up. The wireless protocols all fall back to slower speeds in the presence of a less than ideal signal. So if that signal starts to get weak, one of the things that will happen to compensate for that weakness is a slower, perhaps more reliable, but still slower speed. Similarly, interference from things like walls and electrical appliances and other sources of radio signals, including some of those other wireless access points you're seeing or other devices, can all interfere with the signal. So the fact that you are, for example, a couple of walls away, yeah, that makes sense. There are probably things in the wall, if not appliances nearby, that could be adversely impacting the Wi-Fi signal. And again, the wireless protocols will typically fall back to slower speeds in order to compensate for any interference or signal degradation. Wired Ethernet cables, on the other hand, don't suffer from this kind of sensitivity to distance and or interference. They are sensitive to distance, of course, but not nearly to the same degree. Even at the maximum length of 100 meters, which is what's quoted for the maximum length of an Ethernet cable, the signal's gonna be just fine, it is. Unless there's something physically wrong with the cable, you've got a solid signal at both ends. What that means is that if you have a, say, 100 megabit capable router, chances are you're going to get 100 megabits or close to it, no matter what you have connected. Similarly, if you have a gigabit ethernet connection to your router, chances are as long as all of your devices are gigabit capable, the speeds are going to approach that gigabit speed. 
they will never actually reach it, and that's true even if the maximum is 100 megabits, simply because of things like protocol overhead and sometimes the speed of your own machine. But in general, a wired connection is going to be significantly more resilient to all of the things that will typically cause a Wi-Fi connection to slow down. If at all possible, you really do want a wired connection if the connection speed and resiliency matters. Now, there's one other thing I have to point out, and that is that when a lot of people talk about speed, what they're really talking about when it comes to network speed is the speed of their internet connection. For example, if you have a 50 megabit internet connection from your ISP, that's the most you're going to get, no matter how fast the equipment you happen to have at home is. It's all going to be throttled by the speed of your connection to the internet. So if you are measuring speed and you are not getting the speed you think you should, got a couple of articles on that, but by and large, as long as you're the only thing running on that connection, it's the connection from your ISP that is probably the slow point in your overall strategy. So the bottom line is when things matter, make sure you've got a fast enough internet connection, but then within your home to the extent that you can, choose wired over wireless if speed and resiliency matters. If you found this video useful, go over and hit that thumbs up button on YouTube, subscribe to get more videos as they're released. For links related to the original article on which this video is based, visit askleo.com slash 123806. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.